What's up everybody? Ryan Pulis here from the Pulis Group. We're a tax and accounting firm specializing in tax planning and outsourced CFO services for small business owners and real estate investors. This is the second video in our small business tax and accounting series and today we're going to discuss the balance sheet. Uh, the last video we talked about the income statement. When combined with the balance sheet, the income statement and balance sheet together, they show you the health of your business. So the income statement shows your profitability over a period of time, usually a month, quarter, or a year. And the balance sheet shows the financial condition of your business on a specific date, usually the month end or a year end. So on the screen here, you can see a sample balance sheet. And the balance sheet's broken down into three sections. We have assets, which show what you own. Liabilities show what you owe others. And owner's equity, which is what you've invested into the business plus any profits generated by the business, which were reinvested and are kept for future investment. These are referred to as retained earnings. Retained earnings is simply the cumulative net income or loss from all of your historical income statements since the company started. At the end of each year, the income statement zeroes out all of the income and expense accounts to retained earnings. So it starts over each year. The balance sheet is a running report with cumulative numbers. <clears throat> so you can see at the top of the screen here in the red text, a formula, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. The two sides of the equation must balance, hence the name balance sheet. So I'm gonna go page down here. We're gonna, this, what you see on the screen right now is a typical layout of a balance sheet where you have assets at the top and then followed by liabilities and owner's equity. Sometimes you'll see side by side. So we're gonna look at the same report displayed side by side because I think it just kind of gets hits home that concept a little better with your assets equaling liabilities and owner's equity. So you can see our totals down here, total assets of 267, 365, and your total liabilities and equity total the same amount. So I just I feel like that display helps a little bit. So the main idea behind a balance sheet is that the business must earn or pay for any assets it acquires. For example, if a company buys a new piece of equipment, then it either pays cash, it borrows the money to finance the purchase, or a combination of the two. So if the company pays cash, there's an increase on the asset side for the cost of new equipment and an offsetting decrease of your cash, which is also an asset, for the same amount. So on net, there's a zero impact on total assets. You're really just changing the balance in two different categories of assets on your balance sheet. Now let's say the business borrows money to make the purchase. In that case, the assets increase by the cost of equipment. You increase your equipment account and the liabilities will also increase by the amount borrowed, keeping the balance sheet in balance. So it's important, uh, one, one key thing that with a balance sheet that uh, I always go through and I have my clients go through is reconcile your accounts. You should be able to prove out everything in your asset accounts and liability accounts to some sort of supporting documentation. You know, if, you, if you're a very massive business with a ton of accounts to track, then you know, one person's probably not gonna be on top of all of those. But for most small businesses, this is not a huge undertaking. And by doing that, when you're able to prove out your balance sheet accounts, then you can be pretty confident that your income statement, at least in total, is correct. You know, you're, you're also going to want to analyze those accounts to make things, make sure everything on the income statement is classified correctly. But uh, having your balance sheet all reconciled kind of gives you uh, a, a lot more confidence there that nothing's misclassified. Because as I mentioned before, your income statement closes out to the balance sheet anyway. So you'll see on our example here in the equity section, current year income. So that's gonna tie back to your net income number on the income statement. And that's how the two financial statements actually work together. Um, just a quick example of a reconciliation. It's usually proving something out to some other source document. So your December cash balance on the balance sheet should be equal to the amount on your December bank statement with any variance easily explained. So you, if you write a check from your accounting system, 
it's going to decrease cash on, cash on your books, but maybe that hasn't cleared your bank as of December 31st. So that's a reconciling item and it's going to make a part of the difference. You know, your books in the bank statement may not tie exactly, but they're going to be close and you should be able to account for any differences. So let's take a look at some of the accounts on our sample balance sheet here. So you'll notice that our assets consist of cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and prepaid expenses. And those are in a group, a subcategory of assets called current assets. Current assets are really just those that, you, that can be easily converted to cash and are expected to settle in one year or less. You know, your accounts receivable, you shouldn't have accounts receivable while they're over a year old. Uh, prepaid expenses, those really just expenses. Let's say insurance, you may pay once a year, but maybe you pay the bill for the entire year. Well, a portion of that is going to sit in prepaid expense because each month is going to be roughly one twelfth of that total payment. And it would amortize down as the year goes on. Um, beneath your current assets, you have things like fixed assets, equipment and furniture. Those are non-current or long-term. A piece of equipment's gonna last longer than a year. Uh, intangible assets are things like licenses or goodwill, which also are gonna last more than a year. The negatives, negative balances on our balance sheet on the asset side are accumulated depreciation and amortization, which are considered contra asset accounts. When you book depreciation or amortization expense on your P&L, your debit expense and the offsetting credit is to the balance sheet. So your equipment and furniture items are recorded at cost and don't change. This contra asset account is showing how much has been depreciated so far at this point in time. On the liability side, we have things like accounts payable and credit cards payable and current liabilities. Again, these are things that are expected to be paid off in less than a year. Long-term liabilities are things like notes or mortgages that are not due until longer than one year. You know, you're making payments throughout the year, but the note itself is not going to be paid off for at least a year. And then we have our equ equity section, which consists of owner contributions, owner distributions, our retained earnings that we discussed earlier, and current year income. Now, there may be times when you're looking at a uh, balance sheet and retained earnings and current year income aren't split out. But typically, if you're using a accounting system like QuickBooks for a small business, they're going to be broken out, which is helpful. Now, you'll notice I have a few ratios on here. So we've got four on this example down here at the bottom of the report. And these are just four common metrics. There's dozens that you could go through, but these are four of the more common. So first we have the current ratio, which is current assets divided by current liabilities. This is a measure of the company's liquidity. It shows how likely the company is able to cover its current liabilities. So below the current ratio is what's called a quick ratio, which is basically your current ratio, but in the numerator, we're going to deduct inventory and prepaid expenses from the current asset number. So this liquidity, liquidity ratio is a bit more conservative and the reasoning behind it is inventory needs to be sold. Prepaids aren't really going to convert to cash. So you're looking at what is cash or can be quickly converted to cash to cover your current liabilities. And generally, a higher number is better. But you don't necessarily want them too high. So we also have the debt to equity ratio, which tells you the degree to which a company is financing its operations through debt versus wholly owned funds. You calculate this ratio by dividing total liabilities by total equity. So in our case here, we would have 114,000 divided by 267,000, which gives us, or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, by 152,000, the equity. So 114 divided by 152, which gives us a ratio of about 75%. And finally, we have a return on equity metric, which shows how efficient a company is generating profits. It's calculated by dividing net income by total equity. So as I mentioned before, if your balance sheet doesn't show current year income, you need to go to your income statement to find the net income number to calculate this uh, particular ratio. 
So our net income divided by total equity in this case is 82%. So that's this 125,000 divided by 152,000, which gives us uh, our 82% ratio here. So that's a pretty good return, 82%. And, but again, you know, each, how, how great uh, any particular metric is, you, you wanna look at other companies in your industry and see where you stand compared to them. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. In this case, a higher return is generally better. So that about does it for our discussion of the balance sheet. I hope this was helpful. If there are any other topics you'd like to see covered, let us know in the comments section below. And as always, we're taking on new clients. If you'd like to work with us, then hit us up on our webpage at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P.com forward slash contact. Thank you and have a great day.